guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having a fantastic day. Now in this video, I'm going to be watering my Apuncha Prickly Pear Cacti for the first time after their winter rest. Now we're into third week of April now and these Apuncha Cacti are very, very wrinkled. I'll just show you some of these here, very crinkly and wrinkly. And some of my Apuncha Humifusers that have grown from seed a few years ago, I think it was back in 2015, are very wrinkly and crinkly and they're desperate for good watering. And normally I would start sort of watering these Apunchas probably from late March onwards. But because the weather has been nice during the day but the nights have been very cold here in Ireland, in Northern Ireland and in many parts of the UK, I've had to withheld, withhold watering them and I'm desperate because as you can see they're very shriveled. Now people often say to me, Lynn, when is the best time to start watering my cacti after winter? And it can depend on so many different things. It's not an easy answer because it really does depend on where you live in the world, your climate, the, the temperature, whether you have your plants indoors or outdoors. And uh, because these are punches here are outdoors in the polytunnel that... Um, it's kept cool and dry and we do have a heater that does come on if it drops below 5c 41 degree fahrenheit but the nights have been so bitterly cold the past week or two that even at 5 celsius it's still cold to have uh, plants sitting in uh, water overnight so i've had to be very very strong and withhold watering on these but as you can see this is our um Austro Cylindra Apuncha Salmianus and they are very crinkly and wrinkly. A little bit how I feel most days, <laughs> especially during the winter. I sort of come awake when the plants come awake as well. But uh, oh dear, it's good to give them a good, um, good watering. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. A bit of a video vlog, guys. And I've got lots more cacti to water for the very first time after winter as well. I'm going to make a separate video on these. These are all our, a lot of our um, Echinopsis varieties here. I'm really happy to see there's buds forming already on these. Seed pod from last year that should be ready to harvest. So mega excited. See um, flower buds forming on the big um, Astrophytum ornatum there. So this is brilliant news. Loads of uh, flower buds forming as well. On many of our other plants, that's another Echinocereus there. And I've got um, other types of Camocereus and Camelobivius all coming to bud. I'm going to make a separate video when I do that, probably the next day or two, so stay tuned for that as well. But as you can see, very crinkly, wrinkly looking cacti. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to show you this here. This is my Trichocereus seedlings as well. They're about five years old, so they're not seedlings as such but still young, very crinkly and wrinkly. So I cannot wait to get watering, guys. I'm gonna make a separate video as well when I water the aloes, gasterias and hawarthias, all these on here as well. This is typical when um, aloes and hawarthias go um, be too long without water, they go very red. And it's been very sunny, like the days have been gorgeous here in late, sort of middle to late April. Um, lovely sunshine, but the nights have still been so chilly. So I've had to, it's been so hard for me not to water them because I'm somebody who just has got no patience. But happy to say, it looks like the minimum night temperatures now are sort of five, six, seven C. So it's safe to go ahead and water them. And that really does, does you know, does matter when you when it comes to watering your cacti for the first time if in doubt the old saying if in doubt do not cacti will less likely die from being underwatered than being overwatered you know april is such a dodgy time of year we've even had snow here even last week it's been crazy you know you you have a few days of good weather and the plants are all sending out buds and looking good and you start to water them and you get bitterly cold weather it can be the death of them so you have to be patient they often say it's best to wait till may before you start really start to get watering but as you can see these are so desperate i cannot wait any longer because they're so crinkly and uh, they really do need a good watering so that's a little bit about 
the Punchers Prickly Pears. And um, what I've done here, I've got the uh, water pump here. And I like to use, when I first start them up in the after the long winter rest, I like to use a bit of a weak strength of tomato feed. And I use a brand by Maxi Crop. It's the organic Maxi Crop fertilizer. You can use any good quality cactus and succulent feed or tomato feed. Um, tomorite is another really good quality one as well and the reason why I use tomato feed is because it's high in potassium and it helps to encourage flowering now when it comes to things like a punchers if they're grown um, indoors even in this polytunnel for example we have some we put outside in our yard um, very soon and that's good as well they get love the fresh air but because here in, in Northern Ireland we get so much blinking rain even in the summer guys that we have to keep the majority of our a punch of cacti here in the polytunnel and they're less likely to flower although this position here they get plenty of sunshine not ideal with a green covering because we have a green sort of coated polytunnel greenhouse if it was clear it'd be far better it'd let more light in um, me and Hans on the lookout hopefully to move house this year where we can get a bit of land where we can have a big sort of greenhouse or clear polytunnel it's going to let maximum lighting for the plants but you have to do what you have to do <laughs> but they, they still get plenty of sunshine as you can see the sun coming onto them now and um I always find a bit of a tomato feed helps to encourage flowering and it's also very good for them anyway it gives them a good greens up the leaves and everything like that this is our um, Australisilindra puncher salmiana and it was flowering absolutely beautiful last year these are the uh, fruit pods it's quite a rare cactus to get and this is one that my wonderful fiance Hans got when he lived in Sweden he's had for absolutely years and he brought it over when he moved over to Ireland so um, we've got a few different types of this um, very wacky um, Australisilindra puncher here and um very special anyway enough of my waffle <laughs> this is going to be me um watering the apunchas after the winter rest now we have other types of apuncha tephro cactus here also shriveled as anything very wrinkly and crinkly and uh going to be doing these also in this video so here we go so that's a little bit about them talking about how wrinkly and crinkly they are and how desperate they are to be watered and um, as I say I've made this mixture up now normally when I start to when I water the cacti and succulents during the spring and summer I use a tomato feed at half of the recommended strength that they recommend for tomatoes but because this is the with the punches this is the first watering I've given I'm going to be giving them after the winter I'm only going to be used quarter of the strength and that's because they're bone dry and shriveled and if I was to water them with a bit of a high strength um, potassium feed such as tomato feed it possibly could shock the roots a little bit and they might come into a bit of a quick growth spurt I don't really know a lot of people use tomato fertilizer straight after the winter no problems it's very common to use this type of feed with cacti and succulents to encourage blooming but i want to be a little bit on the safe side so i'm using quarter of the strength and as i say i like to use maxi crop but you can use any good quality tomato feed or any good quality cactus and succulent fertilizer as well i also like to use Kempak. And if you want to know why and how I use tomato feed to water my cacti and sugars, I've made many, well, quite a few videos on it. Do check out a video out I have made on why I like to use tomato feed to fertilize my cacti and succulents. Links up above and down below in the video description. So that's that. The tomato uh, feed has all been made up in there. And now I'm going to start watering and plumping up these shriveled, wrinkled, crinkled apunchos. Now, as I say, I've made up the um, feed here. Good pump. I like to use one of these um, hose lock pump sprays. This is one I got from a garden centre, a DIY shop called Home Base. Great. Uh, it's one of the best, actually. And they've got the long sort of nozzles, so you can reach all the cacti at the back so without knocking them all off. When I use a normal watering can before in the past, I used to knock plants off left, right and centre. But this is great. You can just aim directly here. And as you can see, this one is very crinkly. May have to cut back some of these dried up pads. As you can see, they're falling off. They're that dry. Um, but I'll see first when I give them a good water, they're fat enough. And any really dry ones that aren't going to recover, I can just prune off. And the first watering of the year, you want to make sure that you really give them a good, good soaking. 
and it's so, I have to say, so lovely to do. I've watered a lot of the succulents already because they were so shriveled and they really do look so much better. And I made quite a few videos on how to know when to water cacti and succulents after the winter rest. So I'm not going to go into too much in this, this video, it's already going to be long enough. So I'll link their videos all down below in the video description so it'll help you out. As I say, there's no easy answer because it really does depend on where you are living in the world. My wonderful friend Anna from Cactus Cafe, and I'm sure you all know her, um, she has an amazing YouTube channel. She lives in uh, Nevada, in Las Vegas, and she's sort of blessed with the lovely weather over there. But um, it has its own challenges as well, you know, because during the winter it can be very dry without the rain and cacti still shrivel. But because of um, Anna's lovely climate, she has to, she waters her cacti much earlier than we probably would here in the northern hemispheres. Um, so there's really no right and wrong when it comes to watering cacti in the after the winter rest. It just depends on you know your climate, and where you're living, and plants indoors and outdoors. So I'm going to carry on watering all of these um, punchers, and then show you what they look like after I've done them all. A lot of my tephro cacti are as shriveled as anything, so um, giving all these a good, really good watering. Always so lovely to do. That's all the Apuncha prickly pear family, all thoroughly watered and fed. And it's been so wonderful to do. And I'm sure I'm gonna see these plump up over the next few days again into a nice plump appearance. And all the tephro cacti have all been thoroughly watered and fed as well. So I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a video vlog guys and do check out the other videos I've made on watering cacti for the first time after their winter rest. So all their videos will be up above and also linked down below as well. And for lots more tips and tricks on how you can care for and grow cacti so then please do subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. And also um, check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. And also follow me on Instagram at Desert Plants of Avalon and on Twitter and uh, Facebook as well. I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye. Thank you for watering me.